So hello to everybody. Um, I'm Dominic Cogan. I have been working in the sanctuary off and on for a number of years now. I work as a full-time mindfulness and well-being uh, teacher. I've been practicing for about 16 years. And so that's, that's me. And I'm based here in rural Kildare. That's where I am at the moment. Uh, okay, so I'm going to ring the bell and we'll kind of do a kind of a lead into a meditation. So you might like to become aware of how you are sitting or perhaps you're resting upon a bed. And bringing a certain intentionality to what you're doing. So perhaps having a clear intention to be present. But to be present in a way that has a kind of kindness towards it, a quality of kindness or, a, or affectionate quality towards your moment by moment experience. And what I'd like to do, first of all, before we get into the meditation completely, is to kind of just cast the net wide to the last couple of weeks of our lives and maybe just reflect back on how it has been for everybody. And it is the case that at any given moment of our day, we are having experiences that could be described as somehow pleasant or perhaps unpleasant or maybe neutral. And all of those possibilities also have consequences in terms of how we respond to these moments. So obviously if we're having a pleasant moment, we kind of lean into it. We often want more of it. And that can be good, but there is the possibility also of ending up in a state of wanting more and not being able to have it, sometimes known as craving or grasping or maybe obsessing about something, about some desired object. And of course it can lead us at a time like this when we're housebound, so many of us, that we're kind of uh, binging on, you know, box sets on Netflix or whatever it is, or perhaps overindulging in food or perhaps alcohol, or other ways to kind of ease the, 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 the pain perhaps of being in, uh, um, these unprecedented times of COVID-19. And of course, many people are aware of unpleasant moments at this time. So the possibility of worry or anxiety and the effects this has on the body, of course, if we're not uh, used to practicing mindfulness, we may not be aware that that our approach to the unpleasant can often involve a tightening in the body, a kind of a bracing against the pain, or a holding on to a negative storyline about what might happen, a kind of obsession with social media like WhatsApp or Twitter, where we're prey to the kind of scaremongering that people put out. And then of course, this, this is held in the body in ways, often leading to a shallowness of breath or a kind of um, low grade tension or anxiety in the body, which may not have any specific cause, but just we're picking up on the kind of fear and anxiety that's often out there in the media or maybe people were talking to online or over the phone. Of course, another approach to experience when, the, when we don't find it either pleasant or unpleasant, where it's more or less neutral, is to simply zone out and you know, go to sleep or to um, just kind of uh, draw the curtains and watch TV and, and not take necessary action, you know, like, like taking proper care of ourselves or 
not caring for other people. So we're all in this situation together and we can all get hooked into either kind of getting too hung up on pleasant experiences and, and um, grasping for that, or perhaps avoiding the unpleasant and having that kind of bracing tightness in the body. And what mindfulness invites us to do is to become aware of these tendencies within the mind in, in how we relate to our experience and to try to come to some kind of balance, some kind of equanimity. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a, a very well-known meditation known as the, the mountain meditation. And we're just going to use that as a template to allow us to be in a, to create a sense of stability, a state of balance and oneness in both body and mind. So I'm going to ring the bell to bring us more formally into this meditation. So for this particular meditation, posture um, is very relevant. But I do recognize that for some people, it may not be that easy to, to be sitting upright. It, so it's fine to be lying on a bed or lying on the floor if you need to. So it's really about intention rather than um, having a clear picture in your mind. So. This practice involves a certain amount of visualization. So just once again, paying attention to the body and if you can, sitting in, a way, in an upright position. So just noticing the contact between feet and floor if you're sitting on a chair. The contact between the body, the sitting bones, and the seat of the chair, or the contact between the back and the couch, or the, the bed, perhaps, that you, you may be resting upon. And noticing how the body is being supported by floor, by chair, by the bed. And as best you can, now moving into sensing mode rather than thinking mode. Of course, thinking will be going on anyway, but with the intention is as much as you can to tune into what's happening in the body right now. And bringing a kind of a light touch focus on the movement of the breath flowing in and flowing out of the body. So having achieved a certain stability in the body and hopefully in the mind as well, but if, if that hasn't happened, not to worry, simply just resting in however your experience is for you right now and trusting that it will be just the right experience for you. So picturing in your mind a mountain, a mountain perhaps that you personally know, perhaps you've climbed the mountain or admired it or it may be a mountain that you've seen a photograph of or it could simply be a mountain that you conjure up in your imagination. A mountain that in some way inspires you, gives you a sense of strength and confidence. And as you focus on this image of the mountain, 
And for some people, of course, when they visualize, they don't always see a clear image. So it's really more important to, to tune into the feeling of the mountain. So not to worry if you don't have a clear image. So as you're connecting to that sense of the mountain, noticing its overall shape, perhaps the peak of the mountain rising high, and also the base of the mountain rooted to the crust of the earth. Noticing the sloping sides of the mountain and having a sense of how big, how massive it is, how unmoving it is. and its majesty and beauty. This mountain in your mind's eye, embodying all the qualities of mountains in terms of shape and form. And as you hold that image of the mountain, it may be that you can see that there's snow perhaps at the top of the mountain or perhaps some trees on the lower slopes. Just sitting and breathing with this image of the mountain, observing it, noticing its different qualities. And in this next step, seeing if you can somehow bring the qualities of the mountain into your own body, into the stability and rootedness of your own body as you sit here. And so we explore the mountain in many different moments and seasons. We notice that sometimes the light changes. Night follows day. The mountain may be bathed in sunlight or cast into shadow or barely seen in the moonlight. Through all of these changes, there's an, an abiding calm in the stability and endurance of the mountain. And we notice that in the summertime, the snow has gone from the mountain, except perhaps in parts that are hidden from sunlight. And in the autumn, we may notice lots of beautiful autumn colors on the tree line, lots of reds and oranges, browns and yellows. In the winter time, it may be that snow blankets the mountain. Particularly in Ireland, at any season at all, the mountain may be lashed by showers of rain or hail. In winter especially, there may be storms pounding at the mountain, freezing rain, and lots of fog. The tourists who have come to visit the mountain in the summer may be gone in the, in the winter. And it may be shrouded in mist or fog for days on end. The mountain almost forgotten by the people living in the towns and villages around. And then spring comes along and perhaps there is bird song. 
mountain flowers appear, gushing streams. Through all of these changes within the seasons, the mountain continues to sit, unmoved by weather, by what happens on the surface, by appearances. The mountain retaining its rock-like connection to the earth, to its strength and to its beauty. And the invitation now that as we continue to hold this image of the mountain, that we too begin to embody in our sitting this unwavering stillness and rootedness in the face of everything that changes in our own lives. And it may be that on any given day or week that we experience different seasons in our lives. Times when there is fair weather and lots of opportunities, the presence of friends, connection, exciting places to go, good health, etc. And at other times we may have a winter-like experience in our lives where perhaps doors are temporarily closed. Maybe there are losses of friends to illness or separation. We may have health challenges. There may be worries about family or friends. Or as we find ourselves right now in the country almost in lockdown, uh, limitations on our freedom to move and to gather together. We may be having a kind of winter-like experience, even though on the outside, we see that actually spring is truly with us. And the mountain has much to teach us in our present circumstances about abiding in calm, staying present with what is, remembering that we are always supported by the ground beneath us, by the environment around us in terms of both the animal kingdom but also the plant life by the air that we breathe. And of course, one of the nice things about modern technology is that if we use it wisely, as we are doing right now with this Zoom session, we can stay connected to people that we love or people that we have some shared bond with. And we can feed, we can have the insight that whatever we may be suffering right now because of the current situation, we suffer together. We are not isolated. And we can learn also from the mountain that as the mountain endures the different weather conditions, that our own situation of difficulties that we face in our lives is largely impersonal. It's just stuff that happens. And when we drop the story of why me or why now, and just see it for what it is as so much weather, so much weather that teaches us to be rock-like, mountain-like, strong in the face of various kinds of adversity. So for the next few minutes, just holding the silence as best you can while we sit as the mountain.
So I would just like to end our practice today with a very short poem by the Chinese poet Li Po, reflecting on and the experience of doing meditation practice in front of a mountain. And he says, the birds have vanished down the sky. Now the last cloud drains away. We sit together, the mountain and me, until only the mountain remains. We sit together, the mountain and me, until only the mountain remains.